yeah what more can be said how's it going racing fans it's me it's me it's that cip with the preview and predictions for the 21st and final race of the f1 2018 championship the abu dhabi grand prix well here we are 20 races gone and we're getting ready for the final one it's been good it's been great at times but it's also been infuriating ferrari and red bull all in all it was formula one the good the bad the ugly this is the sport we all love and uh, well cherish so much Anyway, there is a time to be reflective and we'll get to that in future videos, but right now we still have a race to go through. But also, more importantly, this final F1 race of 2018 is a goodbye, in more ways than one. Some are good, some are truly heart-wrenching, and uh, yeah, we're talking, we're talking Titanic and uh, Lord of the Rings stuff. We'll get to that, but first, some info about this weekend. F1 is in Abu Dhabi this weekend at the Yas Marina circuit for yet another curtain call on another season. I've moaned and groaned about this circuit in the past, but what the hell, there's room for more. I really dislike this whole event. From the location, to the track layout, to the silly dusk to night uh, gimmick, to the lack of on-track action, but more importantly, I despise the fact that it acts as the season finale. Everything about the Abu Dhabi GP screams at me money over sporting event, which personally I think it does a whole lot of harm to the already flawed and dwindling Formula 1 show. In my book, this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix should be scrapped. Okay, rant over. Now, the Yas Marina circuit has been a constant presence at the tail end of every single F1 season ever since its first introduction in 2009. The track has 5.5 kilometers and 21 dull, uninspiring and mostly 90 degree corners. The Grand Prix will run for 55 laps, insomnia curing 55 laps, accumulating to a total racing distance of just over 305 kilometers. Due to the circuit's many slow and medium slow corners, traction is quite important around here. But on the other hand, lateral forces and tire stress are not that high. The asphalt itself, it's neither grippy nor abrasive, so it won't encourage anything other than a one-stop strategy. On the aerodynamic side of things, the circuit requires some medium to high downforce packages, somewhat similar to what we saw in the US. For this final race of the season, Pirelli brings in the super soft, ultra soft and pinky hypers, which again, screams at me one stop strategy, at least for the top three teams. However, very important, the weather, it'll be hot. Now, at this point of the video, I usually go through some major talking points ahead of the upcoming race. And don't get me wrong, there are still some undecided positions in the final standings in both championships. And obviously, some teams will fare much better than others at Yas Marina. But at this time, I would like to take this opportunity to pinpoint some changes that will occur after this 2018 Abu Dhabi GP. Because like I've said in the intro, this weekend marks more than one ending. Number one, no more super, ultra, hyper. Joy of joys! Liberty, Pirelli, FIA, thank you for your common sense. From Australia 2019 onwards, we'll have only the hard, medium and soft ones. The rubber itself will still be the same as this year with compounds ranging from super hard to hyper soft. But the name of the lot will be hard, medium and soft for each and every race. Good. I won't call it distracting, but these super ultra hyper code names did more harm than good to the whole show. Number two, the end, the actual end of the silly season. Hopefully, this went on for far too long. Come on, William Storoso, put us out of our misery, please. Confirm Kubica and Hartley or Albon and make everyone happy, please. Well. Everyone apart from a certain Sergei and a certain Esteban. Number three, and speaking of the Force India driver, yeah. 
See you later, Mr. Ocon. This is quite sad, isn't it? Esteban proved time and time again that he deserves to be in Formula 1. Apart from, apart from last time out in Brazil, what the hell was that? But yeah, aside from that, he deserves to be in F1 just as much as Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and Pierre Gasly. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see him make a comeback in 2020. Number 4. The perennial underdog Marcus Ericsson goes indie. Yeah, the Suede is calling time on his F1 adventure and frankly I'm surprisingly sad about it. Yes, I know, there are better drivers out there who should be in Formula 1. Yes, he was stuck in underperforming cars for the better part of his career. And yes, he was demolished by each and every one of his teammates. And yet, his occasional point scoring races and his battles at the tail end of the grid made for some great action sometimes. Good luck in IndyCar, Marcus. I really hope it goes well for you there. Number 5. Stoffel Van Dorn goes electric. Dropped by McLaren after an underwhelming season with only flashes of what I'm sure he's capable of, Stoffel will make the switch to Formula E this winter. I have to say I'm really miffed about why it did not work for him in Formula 1. He had such a successful junior career, but for some reason or another, F1 never really worked. He's a tremendous driver and a solid addition to the electric series. So Stoffel, go out there and show us what you can do. Good luck. And number six, spoiler, this is the one that will make me rather emotional on Sunday. Fernando Alonso leaves Formula One after 17 years on the grid. Yeah, what more can be said? A ferociously competitive driver, a divisive character, yes, but an undeniable Formula One great, all the same. Through thick and thin, the Spaniard showed what work, dedication and talent put to good use can do. By the way, my fellow F1 YouTuber Formula Motorsport has an upcoming video where he asked fans to name their favorite Alonso moments in the sport. Link to his channel is in the description. Keep an eye out for this video, it's quite a nice little tribute to him. We'll miss you Fernando Alonso. For me, and I'm sure for many others, F1 will be a poorer place without you. Right, wow, this video is long. Drinking game for this Sunday goes as follows. One sip for every pit stop, three sips for every overtake, and down all the drinks available at the end of the race. All of it, everything you had prepared for this GP. We have a long winter ahead of us and come 2019, Formula 1 will look rather different, won't it? New aero rules come into play and also all these departures we've talked about. Finally, and for the last time in 2018, predictions time. Pole position goes to Sebastian Vettel. After his wretched weekend in Brazil, he needs to finish the season on a high. Come the end of the race from P10 to P5, Perez, Grosjean, Ocon, Leclerc, Ricciardo and Verstappen. P4, Valtteri Bottas, P3, Kimi Raikkonen, P2, Lewis Hamilton and the winner from pole position, Sebastian Vettel. Because for me, the final podium of the year should be the same as the one we've had at the first race in Australia. In my mind. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts for this race, predictions and are you going to cry at the end of it all? Because I might just shed a tear. So there's something to look forward to in the race reactions. Again, I can't thank you all enough for your support throughout the year and uh, well, for subscribing to this channel. You guys are the reason I keep on making these videos. Drop a like, share this video around on social media and if you're new around here, please remember to subscribe for more Formula 1 content. As always, I've been Chip. You can find me on Twitter at chip underscore DGS and on facebook.com forward slash digital grandstand. And this has been the final preview and predictions for 2018. Cheers.